Hello everyone, this is Windex the Great, and today I will be demonstrating a simple command block system that can be used to toggle players within a specified area to adventure mode. This tutorial is for Bedrock Edition, which means players on console, mobile, or Windows 10, not Java Edition. The major command block differences between these two versions lies in the fact that in Java you can edit entity tags, and in Bedrock you cannot. This system, however, is relatively simple, so we will not run into any issues because of this difference. This in mind, let's go over the required settings for operation of this system. These settings can be accessed by pressing Escape in single player, or by the server owner in a realm. Bear in mind that, to edit a command block, you must be in creative mode. The only required settings are enabled cheats and enabled command blocks. To start off, we will first need to give ourselves a command block. This can be done using the slash give command shown on screen. Next, we start to find the lower bound coordinates of the area we would like to restrict to adventure mode. The easiest way to do this is to go to the area you would like to toggle and move around until both your X and Z values are decreasing. From this, choose a point on this corner of the cube and place down your command block. The first command we are going to input is the area toggle for adventure mode. I put the command block on the far corner, however this is just so I can make use of the tilde notation. Near the end of the video, I will show you how to accomplish the same task using set coordinates. The command block itself will be set to repeating and always active, and contain a slash game mode command. The most important part of setting this command block is the at a selector argument. This will allow the command block to target all players within the spatial parameters that we set. To start off, we will use at a, m equals s, x, y, and z equals tilde. This will allow us to measure the area from this command block and set any players therein to adventure mode. Next, we must find the upper bound coordinates of our adventure area. We can use these coordinates, and a bit of math, to determine that the cube we are going to make is going to be 16 by 11 by 16. I got lucky in that my X and Z ended up being the same, however this will not always be the case. Now that we know the volume of our adventure area, it is time to input that in a way that can be used by the command block. The easiest way to do this is to utilize both X, Y, Z and DX, DY, DZ. The D variance of these coordinate parameters tells the command block how far, and in what direction, to extend its execution area. D, probably, is shorthand for delta, a common math term meaning change. After setting this command, it would be advised to test it out by setting your game mode to survival and walking inside of the area. As you can see, the command block will output a message saying your game mode has been updated to adventure. Now that we know our adventure mode set command works, we can start building a system that will switch player game mode back to survival. After all, if a player gets stuck in adventure mode, they will not be able to interact with anything in the world, even outside of this restricted area. So let us set our game mode back to creative, and add a few additional command blocks. Now, since we already have an area that sets mode to adventure, if we were to just make a slightly bigger cube to toggle back to survival, we would run into a whole lot of chat spam and a wildly vacillating game mode. To remedy this, we just need to build a hollow cube outside of our adventure cube that will toggle game mode back to survival. My preferred way to achieve this result is to visualize needing one command block for every face of our cube. All of these faces will need to be set slightly outside of the adventure area because, as I mentioned previously, if the areas overlap, you're going to have a bad time. This said, move negative one blocks x, y, and z, then dig down three blocks. When I was constructing this example, I only dug down two blocks and had to correct this by cloning a block both down and up, but you can choose to start with any of the three and clone as needed. The slash clone command will save you a tremendous amount of hassle, as you can type your command into one block, copy, and just adjust the coordinate parameters as needed. As you can see in this example, the first face that I built is the positive x side face. Another important detail to note is that you only want to affect players that are in adventure mode, otherwise anyone in creative will have their mode changed too. This is accomplished with the m equals a parameter. Once you have adjusted your dimensions to account for the change in block position, 
you can copy the completed block and begin adjustments. For the bottommost block, we will extend fully in the X and Z direction, but only one in the Y. This will give us a bottom for our hollow cube. For the topmost block, we will extend fully in the Z and Y direction, but zero in the X. This will give us a side face extending in the Z direction. Now that we have half of a survival toggle cube around our adventure cube, let us move on to the other three faces. After normalizing the terrain a bit, we measure 16 blocks along the x-axis and mark the edge of our adventure cube as to more easily determine where we should place our next command block. This wall is essentially the same as the first site we did, except it starts with a higher x value. One thing to keep in mind is that it doesn't really matter if the survival walls overlap with each other. This will not affect the functionality. Next, we do the same thing, except along the z-axis from the origin of our cube. This wall is essentially the same as the third side that we did, except it starts at a higher z-value. Now that we have gotten five of the six sides completed, this is actually ready to use. There are a few foreseeable circumstances that warrant a top to this cube, but just for the sake of being thorough, I will show you regardless. We could place our command block in the sky, but that's a little obtrusive and doesn't look very clean. Instead, we can just use the coordinate system to put the block somewhere safe and still cover this area. There are a few differences to bear in mind when adding the static area. Instead of using tilde for our x, y, and z values, we must instead find the coordinates that we need. These are the lowest x and z coordinates, and the highest y coordinate plus 1. From here, it's basically the same as the bottom face. We extend fully in the x and z directions, and zero in the y direction. And just like that, it is good to go. Survival players will no longer be able to edit or grief this area effectively. If you want to test the functionality, just set your game mode to survival and walk around the edge. If you find yourself flipping back and forth between adventure and survival, that just means you need to adjust one of your survival walls outwards. As you can see, there are no breaks, and my game mode is toggling as intended. Now one last thing you may want to consider is putting a game mode toggle at your world spawn. That way if, for whatever reason, someone dies in adventure mode, they will not be stuck in adventure mode assuming they don't have a bed. Anyway, thank you all for watching and I hope you learned something. Feel free to leave any questions you may have in the comments section and I will get to as many of them as I can. I originally did this on my friend's realm while making an archery range with armor stands. It's a decently interesting mechanism, and if this video gets any traction, um, I will likely uh, make a longer video explaining how I was able to circumvent the limitations of bedrock commands and make something complex-ish without access to data tags. Stay clean, internet.